With the first pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, the Philadelphia 76ers select Markel Fultz from the University of Washington. Y'all, y'all forget that this motherfucker could hoop. Now roll that shit back. Bob Furtick out of the clutch, Johnny Barnes, last year. So, June 22nd, 2017, with the first pick in the NBA draft, the 76ers selected Markel Fultz out of Washington University. And man, we were supposed to live in a different timeline. When Markel Fultz was initially drafted, there was a lot of hype around him. Although Markel Fultz is, uh, I mean, he's James Harden. Uh, he's really, really a remarkable offensive talent, but he's going into a locker room full of young guys. And, uh, and I still think it's going to take uh, Philadelphia some time. Uh, not that it's not going to take L.A. some time, but, but I think it's going to take Philadelphia some time to put it all together, and especially if Joel Embiid can't stay healthy. There was a lot of optimism that he would be the final piece of the process, that he would join Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid and make the 76ers a contender. However, we sit here in 2024, and as I'm recording this on July 17th, he has not signed to a team yet and i want to briefly go over how he was initially coming out of college and the hype behind him his time in philadelphia his time in orlando who has now renounced his rights and it looks like he'll be moving on to another team and how we got to this point where we're looking at a former number one overall pick and saying that he might sign for the vet minimum somewhere. We don't know where he's going to sign. Not many places have come out as interesting. Coming out of Washington, he was supposed to be a combo guard that was a good passer, but made a lot of his impact with shot make. He had a really good jump shot. He had good slashing. He had good touch. He was a complete offensive pack. And getting a guy like that next to Ben Simmons, next to Joel Embiid, was really important for the 76ers. So much so that they took the third overall pick and traded it for Markel Fultz. They traded up to get him. They traded the pick that was selected with Jason Tatum and the pick that Romeo Langford was selected with for Markel Fultz. And when he was drafted, he was supposed to be a great player. He was fantastic at Washington. He was amazing. He was a prospect that not many people reach the caliber of. If you go back and you watch that Washington tape, it is still special. If that Washington tape was a prospect, that's going number one overall in most draft classes besides like Victor Wembanyama. He was that good. He was that guy. Not enough people seem to remember how good he was because he's just kind of, and I mean, it makes sense. He has, you know, played on Orlando, which isn't the biggest media market in the last couple of years. Especially considering, you know, uh, up until Paolo Banquero got there, there wasn't much reason to watch them, right? He got there in 2018-19, played there until this year. He spent six seasons, well, he got traded there halfway through the 18-19 season, so about five and a half seasons there. And it was impressive, the comeback he made, because if you guys don't remember, about a few weeks, I think it was, after he got drafted, if not shorter, it came out that... He was dealing with a shoulder injury, and we don't know exactly what it was even to this day. There are some theories out there that I've seen, and I do think he got an official diagnosis, but it wasn't something that was very common, and it was kind of, you know, a, a mysterious sort of thing, especially at the time, because it comes out in a, either a shooting video or a workout video or something 
to that effect, and he has a hitch in his jumper, which wasn't there before. The jump shot from before and from after is a massive, massive difference, and he was out for the first while of his rookie season. He only played 14 games that season, didn't look particularly good in any of them. He only attempted one three the entire season. When coming out of college, he was supposed to be, he was supposed to be someone who was able to create jumpers, was able to create looks for himself, and it just wasn't happening. He played the first four games of his season, scored 10 points, 6 points, 6 points, and 2 points, and then got shut down until 22nd of March. Against the Nuggets, he came back, put up 10 points on 5 of 13 shooting, had 8 assists, and for the rest of the season, he did play but it was in limited minutes and his season high was 13 points that season. Then in the playoffs he played the first game and then played four minutes in games two and three of the Miami Heat series and then did not play after that. It was weird to see Markel Fultz do that because he was supposed to be a big part of that season. He was supposed to be you know the third guy and instead he was sitting on the bench for most of the season and when he did play he barely cracked 20 minutes most nights. The next season rolls around and he plays only 19 games this season. A couple more threes, but he only shot 14 of them. He averaged 8 points as opposed to the 7 points he did in his first season. Did it on slightly better efficiency. He was still shooting 57% from the line. He averaged less assists. And it was clear that he just wasn't going to work out in Philadelphia. So once he played, you know, the 19 or so games that he played that year, he didn't play the rest of the season because of injury, because of what was going on with him, right? They just didn't see a point in playing him, and he was inactive. He It wasn't like he was out of the rotation entirely if he were healthy, but he was just unhealthy. And at a certain point, they got, the 76ers got to a point where they just were done with the Markel Fultz experiment and they traded him to the Orlando Magic for Jonathan Simmons, a 2019 pick, and a 2020 first rounder that Tyrese Maxey was selected with. It was the most favorable of a Cleveland, an Orlando, a Houston, or Portland pick. Yeah. So they traded him for Jonathan Simmons, Carson Edwards, and Tyrese Maxey, basically. So they did end up getting and hitting on Tyrese Maxey, which is a great player but that's very low value for a former first overall pick that was drafted two years ago he was traded at the at the trade deadline and you have to remember like that is not tyrese maxi was selected with the 22nd overall pick i believe or 21st one of the two he wasn't a high draft pick so they're trading him for a late first rounder jonathan simmons and a second rounder imagine paolo banquero getting traded for that right imagine you know f first overall picks from a few years ago getting traded for that you're not expecting them to be traded for that little or at all really so they he gets traded to the orlando magic and signed a contract extension the next year after starting to pick it up that year he played 72 games he ended up with a you know place on the ballot for most improved player it was 13th but that's still some you know improvement there averaged 12 points five assists on 47 27 uh, 73 splits he still wasn't a good shooter but it was clear that he had found a bit more of his form he jumped up almost 20 percent in free throw percentage which is you know pretty significant and it seemed like he might get back to being a productive player even if he wasn't the player that he was supposed to be coming out of college it was clear like you know what you know he can he can play he absolutely has the chops to get on the floor and produce a little bit but then he started dealing with more and more injuries and as they piled up his time in orlando became less and less on the court and more off the court he only played a handful of games in multiple seasons in Orlando due to things like a big toe fracture or knee injuries, and it became pretty clear that he wasn't super healthy. But then the last two seasons, he has played uh, at least half the season. In 2022-23, he played 60 games, and last season he played 43, starting 18 of them. However, it was pretty clear that he had 
fell out of favor in Orlando. He started not getting as many minutes. He lost his starting spot. And he overall just wasn't as good as he was in the year prior. And because of that, he has now found himself in a spot where he's a free agent. And we're not quite sure what's going to happen with him. But there's still hope for Markel. He just has to land in the right spot because his lack of a jumper still makes him a difficult player to play. Even though he does have skills like rim pressure, he's still a good finisher, he still uh, tries on defense, but it's tough when you're a non-shooting guard and you don't have a ton of elite skills outside of that. So that's been the story of Markel Fultz so far. I hope he writes another chapter that is very successful for him. And if you guys liked this video, liked the editing, because I am trying out some new editing stuff in the last couple of videos, let me know how you feel about it. Let me know how you feel about all of the you know choices I'm making. And I hope you have a great day. So just leave a comment letting me know how you liked it. Subscribe, leave a like, and I will see you guys later.